Good day and welcome. Today we have an exciting class for you on floods. In this session, we'll unravel the mysteries behind why certain communities find themselves at higher risk than others, exploring the factors at play. But fear not, for we won't stop there. Armed with knowledge, we'll also uncover strategies for reducing the impact of floods. Get ready for a class that's all about making our communities stronger together. Before we go any further, please like and subscribe so that you do not miss our weekly uploads. You can also email us your comments and suggestions. Why are some communities at higher risk of flooding than others? This question invites us to consider the specific characteristics and circumstances of different communities that make them more prone to flooding. It encourages us to examine factors such as geographical location, infrastructure, land use, and environmental conditions to understand why flooding impacts some communities more severely than others. Places next to rivers often experience floods. Despite this, millions of people across the world live next to rivers. But why would they do this knowing there is a high risk for flooding? People live next to rivers for the following reasons. They use river water for drinking, washing, and cooking. They need water for their crops to grow. The land next to rivers is flat and easy to build on. Maybe there is not enough suitable land in other areas. They do not have money to live in areas where there is no risk of floods or they have ways of protecting themselves from the dangers of floods. The Ganges River can explain why people live close to rivers despite the threat of flooding. The Ganges River is located in South Asia, primarily flowing through India and Bangladesh. It originates in the Indian state of Uttarakhand and travels through several Indian states eventually emptying into the Bay of Bengal in Bangladesh. It is one of the great rivers of Asia. The Ganges River floods almost every year because of two main reasons. First, when the snow on the high mountains of the Himalayas melts, it adds a lot of water to the river. Second, during certain times of the year, there are heavy rains that pour down into the river basin, making the river overflow its banks. People live near the Ganges River despite flooding because of its fertile soil. The rich soil is good for growing crops. With water from the Ganges, crop yields are good and people have enough food. The Ganges is important as a water source for domestic, agricultural, and industrial use. Additionally, the river holds deep cultural and religious significance, encouraging settlement along its banks. Many people believe that living close to the river brings spiritual benefits. Historical ties to these areas and limited alternatives also contribute to people's resilience to flood risks. These factors together outweigh the dangers associated with flooding, leading many communities to continue living near the river. Since many people live in the areas close to the river, these floods can be very dangerous. They can destroy homes, crops, and even take lives. To protect themselves, people can build walls and barriers along the river banks. These barriers help stop the floodwaters from spreading too far and damaging their homes and land. They also create channels to divert the water away from populated areas, reducing the risk of flooding and keeping people safer during these times. Flooding is more likely to happen because of where an area is, the climate there, and how people live there. Such factors can explain why some communities have a higher risk of flooding than others. Your location can determine if the risk of flooding is high. Cities near the coast can flood because of rising sea levels and big waves during storms. Places close to rivers can flood when the water level rises too high. Low-lying areas receive all the water flowing from high areas increasing the risk of flooding. Climate also determines if the risk of flooding in a community is high. 
High rainfall areas and areas where hurricanes occur more often are at a higher risk of flooding. Human factors also have a say on whether there is risk of flooding. Big cities can flood more because there's not enough ground for water to soak into. Densely populated regions are more vulnerable to flooding because there's more stuff covering the ground. Poorer communities may lack the financial resources to prepare for floods or to stay in areas where the risk of flooding is less. As we have seen, floods are often driven by factors such as heavy rainfall, snowmelt, or storm surges. While humans cannot entirely prevent floods from occurring, they can implement measures to reduce their impact. These efforts can help reduce the damage caused by floods and protect lives and property. Constructing walls and barriers can help prevent floods. Protective structures along riverbanks and coastlines hold back floodwaters. A barrier is an object that is made to block or get in the way of something. Developing communities away from flood-prone areas like riverbanks reduces impact of floods. Avoiding farming along floodplains and riverbanks, recognizing the dangers involved, even though it may be challenging, especially for impoverished communities. Improving drainage in towns and cities ensures water can drain away quickly during heavy rains. You can implement laws to restrict building in high-risk flood zones and preventing people from living in dangerous areas. Educate people about the risks associated with flooding to encourage preparedness and precautionary measures. You can also monitor weather forecasts regularly to provide early warnings and facilitate timely evacuation of people in flood-prone regions. Use lakes, vegetation, and wetlands to naturally slow down and absorb water, reducing the risk of flooding downstream. Protect and maintain wetlands, which act as natural flood regulators, by absorbing and retaining excess water, reducing flood risks downstream. Adopt farming techniques that prevent soil erosion, such as contour plowing, and avoid overstocking animals and clearing natural vegetation. The Thames Barrier is one of the world's largest movable flood barriers, located downstream of central London on the River Thames in the United Kingdom. It was constructed to protect London from tidal surges and storm surges that could lead to severe flooding. The barrier was built between 1974 and 1984 by the Greater London Council. It consists of 10 steel gates, each weighing over 3,000 tons, spanning 520 metres across the River Thames. When raised, these gates block the flow of the river, protecting London from flooding. The barrier is raised approximately four to six times a year, on average, during periods of heightened flood risk. When raised during high tides or storm surges, these gates create a solid wall, preventing seawater from surging upstream and flooding London. The Thames Barrier has been successful in protecting London from major flooding events since its completion. It has prevented billions of pounds worth of damage to property and infrastructure, as well as safeguarding the lives and livelihoods of millions of people living and working in the city. Overall, the Thames Barrier stands as a vital piece of infrastructure that plays a crucial role in protecting London from the threat of flooding, demonstrating innovative engineering and effective flood risk management practices. We have come to the end of our class today. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. It was interesting for me to learn about the Ganges River and also the Thames Barrier. Do not forget to like and subscribe so that we continue being able to offer these online classes. Please answer these questions before the answers pop up. You can pause the video as you go. Otherwise, Enjoy the rest of your day and keep well.